There are many ways that you guys can build your character and have a different type of playstyle in Enshrouded. And with this video, I'm going to explain to you guys what I think personally is the best class slash weapon combination you guys can use if you want to do a bunch of damage and just fly through the game. Now, I've spent well over 50 hours. I've got a level 25 character and I've been spending a lot of time farming the kind of end game regions of the game and using all the different types of playstyles I can think of. And I think I have a really good idea of what's good and what's bad. So with that being said, let's get started. So the first playstyle we're going to be talking about is the one-handed weapon and a shield, or aka the tank build. Now, I messed around with the talents and I went with a more kind of like just straight up tank build. And then I also kind of tried to mess around with more of like a like a one-handed uh, sword and shield, but more focused just straight on doing as much damage as possible. And I got to say, both ways of playing this was not very good. I felt like I was very weak when it came to large groups of enemies. Even with the talent point that makes your one-handed attack swings a little bit faster, it seemed like it was really rough and just really difficult to get a couple of attacks in before just getting just straight up overwhelmed by the enemies. I think the tank build is definitely more oriented and targeted for group or co-op play with this game. But I will say if you guys are someone who are like super diehard and you just enjoy the play style of being a tank, then you can totally play this build. Um, I still think it's completely viable. I'm just trying to say like, you know, as far as the other ways to play this game, it's definitely got one of the more slower kill times as far as fighting mobs than the other builds. Another build slash play style that I was really hyped for and I'm just kind of sad with the results was using a bow and arrow and kind of playing like a ranger in this game. As far as the damage goes, I feel like the damage of the bow and arrow is like, it's just okay compared to some of the other things in this list here. And I felt like when it came to the damage with bow and arrow, the amount of time that it requires to farm and craft materials to, I guess, craft arrows for said bow is just, I guess it's like the juice is just not worth the squeeze in my opinion. And again, it just kind of goes back to those arrows, right? I feel like when it comes to crafting arrows in this game, um, if you guys are gonna wanna play a bow and arrow build, you're going to have to dedicate a lot of time to just straight up farming materials to uh, be able to craft those arrows. For example, example, I believe the kind of like later game arrows that I'm using is the iron arrows and you know with how hard it is and how slow it is to um, gather iron for example you know you you need iron for a lot of stuff to craft right and it just it's really kind of hard to you know allocate some of those resources to arrows when you guys have to craft so many other things but I don't know for me maybe it's different for you guys but for me personally I just don't like playing games where I'm having to like constantly stop enjoying the game to have to like farm materials to make ammunition that's just not fun to me and especially when it comes to like you know another combination like the wand in this game where the wand does not require ammo right it's like durability like a like a one-handed weapon it just you just use it right so yeah the too long didn't read is bone arrow is decent but you just got a stomach being able to craft and farm materials to make arrows the next build we're going to be talking about is the two-handers, or i.e. the, I guess, barbarian build, right? Running around with a giant two-handed weapon and just smashing your opponents into oblivion. I really wanted this one to be really good, but unfortunately it just is a little too sluggish and lackluster for myself. And then also, of course, the idea that we do not have any two-handed greatswords in the game. That's kind of crazy in my opinion. But I'm not going to get too upset about that because the game's in early access, and for the most part, it's really good for an early access game. So yeah, anyways, back to the two-handed weapon build. So so the damage, I guess, for two-handed weapons is is decent, right? But the problem that I ran into is that, you know, even, again, it's it's kind of like the same problem with the one-handed weapons. Uh, there's the talent that makes the two-handed attacks faster, but for me, it just, it's still very slow, right? And it just feels really sluggish to play, and, you know, the... I guess it's like the, the weapon animations for attacking is just really frustrating, especially against the one enemy. I think you guys probably know which one I'm talking about. I... I don't know what the name is, but it's like that that like Tuscan Raider looking guy that has the two giant like poison cleavers. It's it's almost impossible to like get a hit off on them with a two handed weapon and not take damage. But I will say that if you guys go with the uh, jump attack with the two handed weapon, that's pretty fun to do. There were a lot of times where I was just in a large group of enemies and I just like spam jump slammed on them and. You know, it's, it's kind of funny to see that, but it's just really annoying that that's like the most viable way to uh, fight large packs of enemies without dying. But even after all that, the two-handed weapon I still think is, is a pretty viable option to play this game with, but the only reason why it's not the best in my opinion is because it's melee, right? And there are a lot of um, ranged enemies and a couple of ranged bosses that it's, you know, the two-handed weapons are just melee in general is going to be completely useless. 
And last but not least, let's talk about wands slash staffs, or just playing like a mage in this game in general. Because this playstyle is by far the best way to play this game. Out of all the testing of different weapon combinations and builds, this is by far the strongest one that I ran into. Now, we'll talk about the staff in a little bit here, but I just want to focus on wands for right now. So when it comes to wands, I feel like wands are just really powerful. The fact that, you know, it's a ranged weapon and it does not consume ammo is really good here. So you can basically just spam this thing until the durability breaks on it. But even then, it's not a big deal because, you know, when I'm playing this game, I literally have like a fire wand and a ice wand. And that way I can always swap between like, you know, enemies that are you know, super effective to a certain type of element. So it's like, you know, you can just keep going. And then obviously if one breaks, you can just use the other one until it's time to repair. So you have like these extended windows of combat and exploration where you really don't have to go back to base and repair things. You can just keep exploring. But if you want wands to truly be really powerful, you do need to go down into the battle mage section of the talent tree and pick up wand master, which is going to give you a 30% chance to spawn an additional wand projectile, and then also sting, which is repeated wand damage is increased by 20%. So basically the longer you attack with your wand, you're just gonna be doing more damage. And what's crazy is there are some wands out there that actually already have the, I guess, built in where there's a chance to spawn an additional wand projectile. And I had one of those wands. So when I was attacking, there were a lot of times where I would see like three wand projectiles flying at the enemy and just like one shots them, right? And then if you really wanna make wands even better, you know, you go down the wizard section and pick up the talent mass destruction, which is going to make your crits uh, with magic weapons hit all enemies within 20 meters. And then also chain hit, which is a critical hit with a magic weapon will automatically hit a secondary target. So there's like a ton of ways you guys can really buff the wand. And then not only is it good for a single target, but it's also going to be doing AOE damage as well. So definitely wand is the best weapon in this game, in my opinion. And if that wasn't good enough, you guys can add a staff into the mix of this and makes you just incredibly OP. The only downside to using a staff in this game is obviously mana issues because spells are incredibly expensive when it comes to resources. So you definitely need to deal with that. But I will say after using a lot of different spells, I think the best one and most efficient one to use is the acid breath one or the acid spray. I, I forget the name of it, but it's basically like the, the poison uh, spray, like the green spell. And I could sit here and try to explain like why it's so good, but I'm just going to show you this clip real quick and let this thing speak for itself. And that's going to do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this one, let me know by leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. And also, what are your guys' opinions on the different builds and which playstyle are you guys currently enjoying? Either way, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for watching. I'm still solo and I'll see you guys in the next one.